Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and today I'm going to do a long overdue Sew Your Stash update. And if you don't know what Sew Your Stash is, it is a little challenge that I'm doing this year to try to sew as much as I can from my stash without buying uh, new things. And I have extended the challenge to all of you and we have a Facebook group all about it and everything. And I'll have the playlist linked right up here so if you are new to the Sew Your Stash challenge, you can check out the playlist and see all the videos and find out all about what is going on. Um, but for today's update, I wanted to go over kind of the highlights of what I've done since my last update. And it has been about two months, which I try to do an update every month but we went out of town twice during that time and we took turns getting sick and now we all have allergies and all that so um, last month it just didn't happen. But I do have a lot of things to share. The first thing that I made since my last update was another apron and this was using the same pattern as the apron I showed in another update but this time I figured out how to make it reversible. So instead of binding all of the edges like I did on the previous apron, I just made it reversible and that took care of all the hemming and binding and all of that stuff. Which if you know me, you know I love anything reversible. I have an entire playlist I believe full of reversible projects because it often cuts out hemming and all of that so um, it's quicker and multi-purpose. And then um, Peyton liked seeing me wearing my aprons, so I made her her own little reversible apron. And I did do a tutorial on this that I will have linked in the information icon as well. Um, but it's just a cute little basic apron with pockets that's reversible. And then I did do the snaps for the um, closure on the neck, and that way it is adjustable and can grow with her as she gets taller. So then another project that I worked on was um, using a plaid curtain I had gotten at the thrift store and I made two skirts out of it, one for me and one for Peyton and I did a tutorial on this as well. This is Peyton's little one and it's the one that is fully finished inside and out because um, I did show two different types of waistbands. This one is the one that looks super nice and the other one, um, the seam allowances are visible on the inside and that's really the only difference between them but it turned out so cute love it and then like I mentioned we did go out of town and while we were out of town we had someone watching our dogs for us and um, I was just about to send some jeans off to the thrift store I was going to donate them and um, decided I wanted to make something for my friend for watching our dogs as a thank you for her so I decided to make another denim rag quilt and I used several pairs of jeans for it as well as lots of fabrics from my stash and her favorite color is teal so I incorporated as much of that as I could and made this and it's not as large as the rag quilt I showed in another Sew Your Stash video this one is 10 squares by 10 squares and the squares are six and a half inches before they are sewn together so it is a really nice like picnic size um, and a great way to use up denim as well as fabric. If you watched the uh, plaid skirt video that I was talking about just a little bit ago then you know that I talked about I'm going to be doing a series kind of this summer and fall about um, refashioning and making your own clothes and things like that um, and transforming old clothes or thrift store items um, so I was getting really excited about that and I had actually come up with some things I was going to make and put in my Etsy store which I have neglected for a very long time um, and so I even went out and bought some jeans at the thrift store um, because I had big plans for them and I had just cut up you know all of mine and um, so I was really excited and working on these projects these clothes that I was going to put in my Etsy store and I got two done out of the I think 10 or 11 I was gonna do and my serger broke um, I was surging some denim and it was going over a seam and the needle got loose and slipped out right as it was going over that seam and two different metal parts on my sewing machine broke um, 
they are technically fixable but it's going to cost over fifty dollars for the parts plus shipping and then me trying to um, you know take off the old parts and put the new ones on and hope that's the only problems that are on the machine those are the visible problems um, so yeah that put a huge damper on my projects because I was so gung-ho I was so excited I was doing these projects and I was just very excited about them there was gonna be a tutorial on one of them and now there's not um, so right now I'm trying to figure out if I want to try to get another second hand serger because this one was a um, given to me used from a friend or if I want to attempt to fix it which I'm thinking I don't because um, by the time I invest the money for the parts and then my aggravation of trying to fix it and all that it's I don't know it's not quite worth that to me so I don't know if I'm getting a second hand serger or a new serger or what I'm gonna do but I need to figure that out so I can pick back up on not only the series but also um, the items I was making for my Etsy store because it was going to use quite a bit of my stash um, which was one thing that was really motivating me was the amount of fabric that I was going to be using on these projects so that's on hold but this series is not completely on hold there are still some things I can do without a serger um, I'm just having to kind of figure out workarounds on some things but um, I do still plan on posting the like refashion your summer or refashion your wardrobe or whatever um, videos yeah <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's the the bummer on that and uh, on a different note, I mentioned, I can't remember if it was on a YouTube video or an Instagram live video because I've done some of those, but um, my younger daughter was actually sleeping in the sewing room because my two girls were not um, doing well with sharing a room when Skylar was younger. And so we had moved Skylar's bed into the sewing room, which was taking up space. And then after the girls would go to bed, I couldn't get in the sewing room and work anymore because, um, you know, she's asleep over there, so I can't do anything. Um, but we finally, for almost two weeks now, they have been sharing a room. We finally got them um, to where they are doing good and both in the same room. So I am taking back my sewing space, and it is so nice. Um, <laughs> not only can I sew in the evening again if I want to, but... Um, I'm just able to, I started rearranging the sewing room and trying to figure out a layout that works best for me and what I want to do. Um, I do still have too much in here with um, just fabric and everything, but that's what this challenge is all about, right? Um, so I'm working on paring things down, using what I have, and also just figuring out what layout and setup works best for efficiency and for filming and all of that and you may notice I got some new lights so I've set those up and those will hopefully hopefully help the um, video quality and everything so I'm really excited about uh, my sewing space so I just switched to a different machine for a while um, so now I'm using a Teal Brother machine and it's a built into a cabinet which is kind of nice kind of not um, it's knee pedal powered which I don't prefer but I'm getting better at it um, I figured out if I put a little wooden box under my foot, it puts my knee up at just the right level that I have more control with the pedal, um, and then I do have a little more space because of the um, the top that opens, so I have a more surface space right there. Um, but yeah, it's you know, I like the brown machine because it's so super fast, but um, it's fun to use different machines every once in a while. I guess that's about it for today. I did work on some other projects since my last update, but they weren't really anything major. They didn't use many um, things for my stash, so I didn't really go into them in this video. But of course, I did post several tutorials since then, so if you um, missed any of those, make sure to go check out all those tutorials, including my cast iron skillet handle cover that I posted um, most recently and that used some of my scraps and so 
that was a really fun one. It's super, super quick project and very scrap friendly, um, beginner friendly, all of that stuff. And of course it keeps me from burning my hand while I cook with my cast iron and that is always nice. Um, but yeah, I guess that is it for today. So yeah, I would love to hear what you all have been sewing from your stash and I will see you all again soon with another new video. Bye.